Read the Bible every day so you'll be full of faith. Welcome you to join Bible Links to read the entire Bible in two years. I believe God will bless you, He will lift you up, and your life will never be the same. The Book of Joshua Chapter 9 The Gibeonite Deception as soon as all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowland, all along the coast of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites heard of this, they gathered together as one to fight against Joshua and Israel. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they on their part acted with cunning, and they went and made ready provisions and took worn-out sacks for their donkeys and wineskins worn out and torn and mended, with worn-out patched sandals on their feet and worn-out clothes, and all their provisions were dry and crumbly. And they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a distant country, so now make a covenant with us. But the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you live among us, then how can we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? They said to him, From a very distant country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard a report of him and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sahan the king of Heshbon, and to Og king of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth. So our elders and all the inhabitants of our country said to us, Take provisions in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants, come now, make a covenant with us. Here is our bread. It was still warm when we took it from our houses as our food for the journey on the day we set out to come to you. But now, behold, it is dry and crumbly. These wineskins were new when we filled them, and behold, they have burst. And these garments and sandals of ours are worn out from the very long journey. So the men took some of their provisions, but did not ask counsel from the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live, and the leaders of the congregation swore to them. At the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them, they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. And the people of Israel set out and reached their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shepherah, Baroth, and kiriath Jerim. But the people of Israel did not attack them because the leaders of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Then all the congregation murmured against the leaders. But all the leaders said to all the congregation, we have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel, and now we may not touch them. This we will do to them. Let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath that we swore to them. And the leader said to them, Let them live. So they became cutters of wood and drawers of water for all the congregation, just as the leaders had said of them. Joshua summoned them, and he said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall never be anything but servants, cutters of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, Because it was told to your servants for a certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. So we feared greatly for our lives because of you and did this thing. And now behold, we are in your hand. Whatever seems good and right in your sight to do to us, do it. So he did this to them and delivered them out of the hand of the people of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day cutters of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, to this day in this place that he should choose. The Book of Joshua, Chapter 10 The Sun Stands Still as soon as Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had captured Ai and had devoted it to destruction due to Ai and its king, as he had done to Jericho and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, he feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai and all its men were warriors. So Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, Param, king of Jermuth, Japhia, king of Lachish, and Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the people of Israel. 
Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces and went up with all their armies and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal, saying, Do not relax your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites who dwell, who dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. Not a man of them shall stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly, having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who struck them with a great blow at Gibeon and chased them by way of the ascent of beth and struck them as far as Azekah and Makeda. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down the ascent of beth the Lord threw down large stones from heaven on them as far as Azekah, and they died. And there were more who died because of the hailstones than the sons of Israel killed with the sword. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the midst of heaven and did not hurry to set forth about a whole day. There, had been, there has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for, for the Lord fought for Israel. So Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Five Amorite kings executed. These five kings, they fled and hid themselves in the cave at Makeda, and it was told to Joshua, These five kings have been found, hidden in the cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. But do not stay there yourselves. Pursue your enemies. Attack their rear guard. Do not let them enter their cities, for the Lord your God has given them into your hand. When Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out, and when the remnant that remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, then all the people returned safe to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. Not a man moved his tongue against any of the people of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring those five kings out to me from the cave. And they did so and brought those five kings out to him from the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And when they brought those kings out to Joshua, Joshua summoned all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who had gone with him, Come there, put your feet on the necks of these kings. Then they came there and put their feet on their necks. And Joshua said to them, do not be afraid or dismayed. Be strong and courageous, for thus the Lord will do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward Joshua struck them and put them to death, and he hanged them on five trees, and they hung on the trees until evening. But at the time of the, of the going down of the sun, Joshua commanded, and they took them down from the trees and threw them into the cave where they had hidden themselves. And they set large stones against the mouth of the cave, which remained to this very day. As for Makeda, Joshua captured it on that day and struck it and its king with the edge of the sword. He devoted to destruction every person in it. He left none remaining. And he did to the king of Makeda just as he had done to the king of Jericho. The Conquest of Southern Canaan Then Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Makeda to Libna and fought against Libna. And the Lord gave it also and its king into the hand of Israel. And he struck it with the edge of the sword and every person in it. He left none remaining in it. And he did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Then Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Libna to Achish and laid siege to it and fought against it. And the Lord gave Achish to the hand of Israel and he captured it on the second day and struck it with the edge of the sword and every person in it as he had done to Libna. Then Haram king of Gezer came up to help Lachish, and Joshua struck him and his people until he left none remaining. 
And then Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Lachish to Eglon, and they laid siege, siege to it and fought against it. And they captured it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword, and he devoted every person in it to destruction that day as he had done to Lachish. And then Joshua and all Israel with him went up from Eglon to Hebron, and they fought against it and captured it and struck it with the edge of the sword and its king and its towns and every person in it, and he left none remaining as he had done to Eglon and devoted it to destruction and every person in it. And then Joshua and all Israel with him turned back to Debir and fought against it, and he captured it and its king and all its towns, and, and they struck them with the edge of the sword and devoted to destruction every person in it he left none remaining just as he had done to hebron and to libna and its king so he did to debir and its king so joshua struck the whole land the hill country and the negeb and the low land the low land and the slopes and all their kings he left none remaining but devoted to destruction all that breathed just as the lord god of israel had commanded and Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea as far as Gaza and the country of Goshen as far as Gibeon. And Joshua captured all these kings and their land at one time because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. Amen. The following is the English translation of Pastor Mohan Wu's teachings on the book of Joshua chapter 9 and 10. Translated by David, read the Bible every day and you'll be full of faith. Joshua chapters 9 and 10 discuss the concept of deception. When reading the book of Joshua, it is important to understand that it relates to our spiritual battles in the process of claiming our inheritance. So, through the events of deceptions, so we learn that we should ask God to grant us the wisdom, ability, and discernment needed in our lives. By examining the deception, that we learn how to face the curses in our lives and transform them into blessings. Chapter 10 de details various battles and the secrets to victory. As Christians, that we face many challenges in our daily lives, financial pressures, job-related issues, personal difficulties, marriage, parenting, work, church services, and interpersonal relationships. So understanding the strategies for victory outlined in these chapters is essential. That we need to see how God guides us step by step along the path to victory. So let's start with Joshua chapter 9, 1 to 2. The king west of the Jordan rivers joined forces to wage war against Joshua and the Israelites. Beloved family, this is not just a historical event. In the end times, everyone will be united in opposition to God's church and his people. This aligns with how in the last days, all people will unite against God's church and his bride. So consider this. Normally, these people will attack each other. In during the certain, the certain periods, they unite to attack God. Look closely at the Gospels. Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, and the scribes were typically enemies, yet they united to oppose Jesus. So this pattern is evident in both the Old and New Testaments and will occur in the old times, in times. Therefore, we must understand that we cannot avoid these battles. And in verses 3 to 6, describing events where the Gibeonites sought peace with the Israelites, that we need to pray for wisdom to discern in the end times who generally seeks the Lord and who is merely attracted to the church's activities, such as marriages, counseling, or parenting talks uh, without a true desire for God. The Gibeonites, however, genuinely sought to know God and desired the protection of the Israelites as God's chosen people. Verses 7 to 13 show how they pretend to come from a distant land to make a treaty with the Israelites. Compare with the words in verses 9 to 10, in those Joshua, from the Joshua chapter 2, 10 to 9, they heard of God's deeds and sought refuge with him. In the end times, many will flock to the church, and we must bring all matters, big and small, before God for discernment. Verse 14 reveals that the Israelites accepted the Gibeonites' provisions without getting, seeking the Lord's guidance. That we must bring every matter, no matter how small, before God, without spiritual discernments that we might mistake human impulse for faith, natural ambitions for spiritual zeal, and human enthusiasm for divine inspiration. This lack of discernments can lead to significant conflict in church, service, and relationships 
that we need wisdom to evaluate people's genuine intentions in the matter of love, investment, and friendship. So may believe that they can lead others to God through relationship or partnerships, but without a strong faith in divine guidance, we risk being led away from the Lord. So verses 16 to 27 describes how the Israelites realized three days later that the Kibbutzites were their neighbors. They journeyed to the Kibbutzite cities of Giblah, Kephirat, Beeroth, and Kiras, and Jerin, and confronted the leaders for deceiving them. The leaders have failed to discern and were now responsible for the consequences. Verse 21 discusses the leader's decision to kill the Gibeonites, despite the people's desire to do so because making a treaty with them was seen as a sin against God. The leader said to the congregation, Let them live. As a result, the Gibeonites became the woodcutters and the water carrier for the entire congregation. As the leaders instructed, the leaders took responsibility for the mistake, and the people should not complain. Sometimes that we might question the church action thinking that they are wrong. However, when leaders are willing to repent and take responsibility before God, that we should trust God is in control, still in control of the church, and leaders making mistakes is not the issue. The issue is if they do not repent and turn back to God. So everyone makes mistakes, but leaders must be especially careful to seek God's guidance in all matters you will know, be willing to admit and take responsibility for their mistakes. When leaders repent, God forgives and justifies them. So the Gibeonites were initially meant to be servants, but then they ended up serving in the temple, cutting wood and carrying water. What seems like a curse became a blessing. They serve in the temple, they helping maintain the fire for sacrifices, providing water for the priest. Although they used this deception to become servants, serving in the temple and allowing them to know and serve God. The leaders took responsibility for their wrong decisions and repented before God. This mistake turned into something good in God's temple. So dear family, curses can turn into blessings, and mistakes can become beautiful things if we continually turn to God and seek His will. If we are attentive to God's will, then we will make mistakes, but as long as we keep turning back to God with pure motives, He will transform our arrow into good testimonies. So looking at verses 22 to 27, and you see in verse 23, it says that, Now therefore you are cursed, and some of you shall never be anything but servants, cutters, a wood, and drawer of water for the house of God. Well, what was meant to be servitude now turns into service in God's temple. Not only are they not destroyed, but they also get to serve to be close to God. You know, a hundred years later, when the kingdoms of Israel and Judah were destroyed, they were exiled to Babylon. When they returned to Jerusalem to rebuild, a group of people called the Nephinite also returned. These Nephinites were descendants of the Gibeonites, that they had been exiled, exiled to Babylon. And even when many Israelites did not return, the Nephinites were willing to come back and to serve God's temple. So what seems like a curse was actually a blessing as they continually see to brought them closer to Christ. So from human perspective, the Gibeonites made a decision. They wanted the blessing of the God of Israel. They used use deception to become servants. But their intention was seen by God, who allowed this mistake to happen to incorporate into Gibeonites' tribe. Therefore, that we should pray about every matter, big or small, and seek property summer. If we make the right decisions, we thank God. If we make mistakes, we turn back to God. We can turn those mistakes into something beautiful. The Gibeonites became the Nephinim in serving continuously in God's temple. The Israelites provided them to a protection, reflecting God's mercy, love, and acceptance. God wanted to use the situation to eliminate the Canaanites because of their wickedness. But the, the Gibeonites responded to God, so their tribe was spared and became the temple servants. Moving to chapter 10, that we see the beginning of the real battles. When someone becomes a believer, sometimes the enemy attacks. It's crucial to prepare new believers with spiritual awareness. Accepting Christ doesn't mean that the Pharaoh, symbolizing the enemies, will let go easily. Like when the Israelites left Egypt, and the Pharaoh pursued them, and we must continually declare freedom from the Pharaoh's grasp. 
Similarly, when we lead others to Christ and they join the church, we must teach them about spiritual warfare. As they may face challenges and attack from Satan, who does not want to let them go? Often new believers encounter as many troubles, wondering why, why problems arise after accepting Christ. It's not bad luck, it's Satan's resistance. Therefore, we must nurture and support new believers in guiding them in spiritual battles. So looking at chapter 10, verse 1 to 5, the southern kings rose up, and in the five emeralized kings aligned, allied to attack Gibeon. It may feel like helping someone lead to may lead to more problems, but we must be prepared to support and to guide them through these challenges. You might think that uh, leading someone to faith is troublesome. You help this person come to faith, join your small group, become your co-worker, and then they have so many issues that need to dealing with that you must understand that you are experiencing a spiritual battle to win souls, that you are rescuing these people from Satan's grip, and they will face many obstacles. Remind them not to lose faith and that God will protect and guide them. In this battle, God is doing something special, a win-win situation. If you only look at the service, then you might think the Gibeonites are really troublesome. You might think that helping people come to faith is troublesome. That you have your own destiny, your ministry, your work, and many other things to do. But God is creating a win-win scenario here. When the Gibeonites asked for help, and all the people came to attack Gibeon, the five kings left their cities and came to to, came to attack. This was an advantageous because the attacking a fortified city is difficult, but here the enemy came out into the open, and the Israelites didn't have to attack the cities. They met their destinies by driving out and defeating all the forces opposed to God in Canaan. By agreeing to help Gibeon, the Israelites also stepped into their destiny. Five kings came out into the plain of Gibeon, and making it possible to defeat them all at once. So dear family, God works all things for the good for those who loved him. When you feel that the helping someone is causing you a lot of trouble, that supporting a marriage, a family, or a child is taking up your time, that you can focus on your own main task. Don't misunderstand this. This is your main task. This is stepping into your destiny, responding to God's will. When the Israelites helped Gibeon, and the enemy came and enabled the Israelites to conquer that land. And this is God's wonderful work. Verse 8, the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be fear of them, for I have given them to your hands, and no one of them shall stand you. In every battle, God tells Joshua not to fear, to be strong and courageous. Even though the five kings were fully prepared with all their forces, the Israelites essentially are farmers. They won their battles not because of their burning strategy, but because of God's presence. The greatest weapons of Israelites was obedience to God and His presence. Our secret to victory today is also obedience to God, continually seeking His presence, believing in His presence. God will strengthen us, increase our faith, our power, the grace in our lives, and our wisdom to fight battles, not by our own might, but because of His presence and our obedience to His guidance. So look at the third and the fourth verses here that as they climb the slope of Bethoron, well, it was very serious, and by the time they reached the entrance of it, it was already morning, and after fighting all night, from the 4th and the 5th sit verses, from the ascent of Haran into the plain of Ajalons and down to the Asuka, God used something to help them. In the first 15 verses, God sent a great hellstorm. In the, verse 11, you can see that as they were descending the slope of Bethoron, the Lord threw down large hailstones from the sky all the way to Asuka. And look at the size of that area from the 4th to the 5th verse. And the whole area from Bethoran to the plains of Angelon all the way to Asuka. The sky changed colors and a gray hailstone felt more die from the hailstones than from the source of the Israelites in the entire night of marching and fighting. Not because the Israelite army was particularly strong but because God's power was up on them. So in verse 12, when the Lord was about to hang over the Emerite lights to the Israelites, Joshua made an unprecedented prayer. He asked for the sun to stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valleys of Angelon. And in the 
In verse 13, indeed, the sun stopped and the moon stood still for about a whole day. And there was never been a, there has never been a day like this before since or since. When the Lord listened to him, and because the Lord fought for Israel, that you might wonder if we can pray such prayer today. Remember, why this prayer was fulfilled, it was an event where the entire natural order paused, an entire night of marching and fightings and then fighting all day. Do people have that much strength? Joshua asked God to fulfill his work and to hand over the enemies as he had planned. This was his destiny and plan accomplished according to his will. So in the New Testament era, Jesus promises that if we have the faith, as small as a mustard seed, then we can move mountains. God will fulfill our prayers today that we don't pray for our ambitions, for our own desires, or for big houses, luxury cars, and personal success. We pray for God's will to be done, for the expansion of his gospel, for the building of the church, and also many souls to be saved, and for more people to seek and love God, for many to understand the Bible. As we continue to pray, God will accomplish his plan and his will according to prayers. And you might ask, why we need to pray? Pray for the sun to stop or a moon to stand still. We don't need to pray for these things. What we should pray for is not the change in the natural world and the visible material miracles that we should pray for, transformation of hearts in the last days, that when love decreases and faith dwindles, when the church is falling to decline and indifference, we earnestly pray for the revival of church, that we ask for God to stop the rulers of this evil age, to revive his church, to turn people's heart, and to raise up the next generations of the church to be zealous for his truth. And this is how we should pray. Indeed, in verses 16 to 17, looking at the last part, and in section 7 of the map, that they fled to the cave, uh, Mecca, where all the enemies were slain, from verses 22 to 27 describes how the five kings were brought out of the cave and completely defeated. Although the Gibeonites seems to be like a troubled people who deceived us, and now in their distress, they sought our help. Joshua immediately set out to aid them that night. If someone has ever deceived you, offended you, or made you very uncomfortable, perhaps even quarrel with you, and today they come to seek your help. Do you respond slowly or quickly? So God examines our hearts. How do we respond to the needs of our brothers and sisters today? It's clear to God's eyes. May the Lord help us. Do you have to give you lights in your life who always seems to cause trouble? Take up your time and seek your help. Continuously discern before God whether you should spend time on these people. If God leads you to help and fulfill them, that you will let you experience step-by-step -step victories in spiritual battles you will also be stepping into your destiny. So look at verses 28 to 43 on the map. From the Gagal, in from the Gibeonites to the Megadite, and to Ninnites, and then further to Ekrant, and back to Himrant, and then to the Bear. Finally, returning to Gil Gilgal, this describes the battles from verses 28 to 43. The king verse phrases and in this passage is Joshua treated each city as he had treated the previous one. I mean, Joshua consistently applied the same principles in each battle. This teaches us that each spiritual battle that we face builds upon the victory of the previous one. The experience in the faith gained from one victory help us rely on God in the next. So I'll just read verses 28 to 43 as a historical account unrelated to your life. They remind us that each battle that we win with God's help strengthens us for the next. And God's principles and words remain unchanged, and our faith in God should remain steadfast. And we can tackle various issues one by one, such as financial problems, marital, marital issues, ministry challenges, parenting problems, health issues, interpersonal conflicts, emotional wounds, and burdens from our family of origin. So there are many battles to fight in life. God's promise of victory. If we rely on Him one battle at a time, dear family, chapter 9 and 10 teach us how to turn curses into blessings through God's grace. So don't view these people as mere trouble, but as an opportunity to help and fulfill our destiny. Each battle and steps 
strengthens our faith and expands our spirit, build our spiritual muscle, and make us victorious Christians. Amen. Dear families, we are going to start uploading English Bible Race episodes on the Forerunner English Ministry channel starting from May 31st, the first day of Judges. We are currently working on moving these episodes to the English Ministry channel. The podcast episodes will also move to Bible Race English. Thank you. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.